Garrett. Thank, Thank you, you Amy. so much, Amy. You're amazing. She's the best. So. Um, if you don't know, we are uh, wedding and commercial filmmakers, and uh, we are a, 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 we like to keep our kit very, very small. So every time we travel or any time we go to a shoot, we're going to take just this one bag. And what that allows us to do is go in and one person can carry everything that we need for any type of shoot, whether it be wedding or commercial. Go ahead and show them what's in that bag. Uh, it, not to say it's not full. This thing is popping at the seams. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to uh, zip up. But right. but our my rule is actually it was it was sort of Amber's rule, but because I'm a total gearhead, I want all all the things. Um, yes. But we came up with an idea. We used to carry so much, like we had a four wheel dolly with like four Pelican cases just full of gear, and it got to the point where some of these really nice. Um, clubs we would go to to shoot receptions, country clubs and things, they would say, hey, no, 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 you can't come to the front door. You have to use the service elevator or the, the service entrance. And That's like, awkward. That's okay. This is weird. So something has to change. And so we, we figured out how to make a kit for filmmaking that is exactly what we need. Each thing has a purpose. And if it doesn't fit in this bag, um, outside of our support equipment, like the, um, the tripods, tripods, monopods, um, yeah. if it doesn't fit in this bag, it doesn't come with this. So every right. day, no matter what shoe we go to, uh, whether it be a destination wedding or a local wedding, we carry the Think Tank Airport Security. And then I have a um, canvas bag for all of our tripods and monopods. So one person can take everything they need and shoot with it and, and have lots of options to go Yes, for. we have so so much stuff in here. And we're going to quickly go through what we have. Um, we could probably spend two, and have spent two hours talking about all the gear that's in our bag, but we're going to go through some of our highlights today. So as far as camera bodies go, um, I shoot video on the A7R3 currently, and Garrett is using the A7 III. And then we also use the A7S II. We still have that in our bag um, for like time lapses and lockdown shots. We just kind of put it wherever, we have two of those in our bag and we put them wherever we need them. Right, and in, in, in situations where I'm starving for light, um, for instance, yes. if maybe they, something's happening in a dark corner in the middle of the reception hall or the cake's over there and it's not, the pin light goes out or something, um, I can know I can grab this, this S2 and just capture what I need in almost no light at all. And that's a huge weight off my shoulders. Yes. We also use the AX100, and that is one of the camcorders that Sony has um, in their arsenal. And we love that as a lockdown shot because it continuously records for however long your battery or card will last. And it's usually of several hours. We need and to upgrade that because there's, there's a new there's one. There's a new one that we're looking that at, the yeah. AX700. Um, we got our eye on it, but we like to, um, yeah. It's new, I must have it. It's, it's <laughs> new, we have to have it. And then we also use the Sony RX0. It's the little pocket, little bitty cinema camera. Um, and we love that. We call that our little video grenade. So we just pop that up on, you know, a tiny little tripod or clamp it to something with a magic arm and we have a great uh, 35 millimeter view. Is that 35? 24. 24. 24. Uh, are you sure? 24. Okay. Um, at four. Yep. Okay. And then we also have the Sony RX100 Mark VI. That is a great little pocket camera that we use for um, behind the scenes photography. Don't even act like it's for work. It's mostly it's, my travel selfie, selfie camera. camera. <laughs> it's my selfie camera. It's a really good it's one. It's definitely in my my purse right now. So that, those are the cameras we use. and. Um, one of the great things about Sony, though, is the lens lineup they have to offer. So This is it, my wish list right here. If right it was here. up to Garrett, we would have all the things. But again, they would not all fit in that little bag that's airport size, you know, like carry-on regulation size. Yes. So we had to really boil down what is most important to us whenever we are going to a shoot, whether it be a wedding or a commercial shoot. So we, we're going to go through our six favorite lenses. I hate to say favorite because all the lenses we have are amazing, but right. these are our top six lenses that get utilized the most. So Garrett's 50 millimeter, that's his baby. Right now, that, that's definitely my baby. Um, there's another one that's my baby, but I don't have it yet, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the 50 one for, I, I love shooting wide open for video because it gives me a much more cinematic look and I can really zero the viewer's vision in on what I want them to focus on. So with that 50 millimeter, I could literally shoot all day with it. I'm able to um, 
shoot in really low light situations if I need to, but it has just enough compression that when, um, you want to go play that video? Uh, it's not playing currently, oh, okay. so we'll just keep <laughs> going. Um, there is just enough compression on, on, on that 50 that if, um, you know, if, if, if I'm shooting Amber here or another subject, let's just say this is, this is my subject, mm -hmm. as I spin around on my gimbal on the 50 millimeter and using um, Sony's excellent autofocusing system with video, as I'm spinning around them, the background moves faster than, my, than, than me spinning around them. So you have this really cinematic motion blur in the background that just really pulls you in and helps, helps me tell a, a better story. Yes. And then uh, my personal favorite is the Sony 70 to 200 G Master 2.8. That is on my camera about 99% of the time. And the way we shoot as a team, um, I'm getting all the 70 to 200 shots, the very intimate and perso personal shots. It's a very versatile lens, so that's why we love to use it. And Garrett is generally using all the different, um, like, gimbal slider you know he's he's doing all the motion shots where I'm getting emotion more often right. than you um, this allows us to stay very unobtrusive that's oh the video is there working. We go. okay Danny. cool so um, this allows us to stay very unobtrusive on a wedding day um, which is great because we are trying to capture the most um, intimate very intimate moments yeah. and so like with this video this was all shot by one shooter standing in the same spot and so that's pretty great you have such a good range that you can tell a story with just the one lens to any one shooter one lens one spot you know kind of getting all the different angles it's super sharp um, it's again my absolute favorite lens in our bag and, um, and here in a moment, we're gonna we're gonna pop it oh, yes. to 200. Yes. But the the ability to autofocus and whip around and get different shots without having to worry about that is tremendous. So we're gonna zoom into this this groom's face at 200, percent just so you can see the the sharpness of um just this is all autofocus just locked into him. So I'm very confident with my autofocus system, and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna come back with some amazing images. Yeah. So what what was it you kept saying? It allows us to stay outside of the allows us to stay out outside of the the bubble of um oh what i i forget what i called it uh but the, it, it, you know sometimes if you get too close to somebody who's not used to um, being being filmed or, or being photographed and they're doing something that's very um, you know having a moment between grandma and and like right here you know between dad and and the bride and the mom um, you don't want to be up in their face so the, at the 200 I can stay uh, far enough away that they don't feel the pressure of like the paparazzi pressure kind of thing right. and it allows us to capture it very naturally and organically and get those those or natural reactions as opposed to like whoa what's that camera doing in my face right so the next lens is a very, very fun lens, um, but it, uh, it can also be cinematic, and that's the Sony 12 to 24 G. It's an F4 lens. Um, it's whenever you need to see all the things. Right, you, you want to see, see everything. Everything in this booth at 12, um, we love to see that sometimes. It's also great for B-roll, blogging, and it's amazing on a gimbal. Right, so here is a, this was a, a really fun event, and I'm using a face detection autofocus on a gimbal at 12 millimeter. This is obviously a very fun, energetic moment, and that's how I want that's how I want my focal length to feel. And so you feel like you know, you're know you in there, you're in the moment with them, and it just has a, a great, fun feeling to it. Now at the same time here, we're gonna, we're gonna switch to a, a different set here in just a second. But yeah, look at that. This is all on, all on autofocus. And as I come around, it's focused on him, and then the autofocus changed. This is not a drone shot. This is the same lens on the gimbal um, on a monopod, just holding it way up in the air, uh, and it looks like it's really super high. So we love the fun, She's the fun, fun energy that that <laughs> that can give us, and this is a, something else. We I love almost lost the camera to his foot right there. Yeah, almost. <laughs> but yeah, it's just so like you get in there and you get really close, and it it puts your viewer in in the moment with the people um, who are experiencing it. Now with the fun. It also can be very epic. So if you want to really slow things down and you have you know, a beautiful, um, like this glass dome where they got married inside of, you really want to see all that epic texture, all that beautiful, um, like if, if you're in a, a huge um, 
Catholic church or something and there's just beautiful ceilings. You want to see all that. You want to see all the chandeliers with the house in the background. You just add some motion to it. it. It goes from a fun, goofy lens and you slow that down, it becomes a very cinematic and epic feel to it. Still at 12 millimeter. Still at 12 millimeter. The, le the next lens we're going to talk about is the 85 uh, G Master 1.4. That is, again, a beautiful lens. It has such buttery bokeh. Buttery, yes. Buttery. I'm sure you can play with all of these on the, the trees out there, but it we use it in a manner to where it focuses the viewer's attention on where we want it, and it has a very intimate and personal feel. Here's um, a, a little mini documentary we're working on. We haven't even finished it yet, but here's um, just the 85 clips that I pulled. Um, this is a very, very talented artist who, who builds these mandolins from a chunk of wood to a beautiful finished product. And for this part, I really wanted to just get you, again, like with a 12 millimeter, but, but, but with an 85, get you into the moment, get you like really, really focused in on what he's doing, the, 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 the hand craftsmanship that he's doing, the, the movements, the way he carves that wood with that little, that little uh, metal uh, carving device. And it has a very intimate feel. You feel like you're right there with him and you're experiencing it with him. And we could really, with its sharpness, you can just see the wood grains, you can see um, just every little tiny detail, and it's just a beautiful lens. And the rest of it is just kind of just kind of fades away into into that buttery bokeh. Yes, um, the 90 millimeter macro is something that is kind of interesting for our kit because it has one job. One, one job. And one it does job. It, well, for us, it, it does it. It has it one it job so in our well. kit, and it does it very well. That that's something that we won't get rid of. Remember, the criteria is it has to make our life better. It has to fit in the case, and it has to make our images better. Right. So we love to use it for detail shots, and specifically the ring shot, which. You're getting ready to see a lot of bling, so yeah. hold on. And, and doing a ring shot for a wedding when you're shooting video is quite a bit different. You have a different approach to it than, than shooting a, an image of a ring because right. it's video. You want to go ahead and... and we, like to show the we like to show motion, so right. the optical stabilization on it... Hold on. There we go. There we go. So we're able to get motion shots that are with a macro lens because right. the OSS is so amazing. And then, yes, like she said, um, it's you know some of those are more motion shots, like the camera's actually moving, and then some of the other shots we just leave the ring sitting still and then use light to move around, um, or in this case it was ink in a bowl of water, move that around and, and, and inject motion into uh, your final video so it's much more exciting than just, oh, there's an image of a ring on a video. I don't understand that. Why isn't it moving? It's a video. It's supposed to be playing something. And so we can add, you know, smoke, just something to make it interesting and cool. And that 90 just, it's re it's makes my life a lot easier. Right. Yeah, and I, the, I believe that the next clip that's coming up is a trick that you actually learned from um, Caroline Jensen, yes, one of the Sony Artisans. artisans. Yes. Um, it's using a copper tube with a macro lens, about, about a, a little copper pipe, copper pipe, yeah. and then backlighting it. And you get some really interesting um, video clips with it. Because with video, of course, if you just you have to do something to the light. You have to be able to get to move it or else it just looks like a, a still image. Yep. So that's what we're always after with that. And then finally, the... Oh, here's my new baby. I was, I don't own this yet. I, it's on order. I'm just waiting for it to come out. I think, it next, I think it comes out next week. I think it comes out next week, yes. It's on the way. Right. I was fortunate <laughs> enough. Um, Sony sent me one to use over the weekend for, uh, for one of our weddings. And I was like, I don't know, I have a 24 to 70, so if I need a 24, I have my G Master 24 to 70, I don't think I need that. And I'm like, oh, I'll just try it out. I was like, okay, I'll try it out. Wow. It is, <laughs> first of all, I know I keep saying this, it's so ridiculously sharp. It, it will be the lightest and smallest lens in my kit, perfect for traveling. If you do street photography, I like to kind of dabble in that. It's great for that. And then I had to make myself not use it the day of the wedding, uh, because if, if I didn't put it down every once in a while, everything I would shoot would be at 24 because it was just, it was fun to shoot. Everything you're seeing here, I shot at 1.4, um, wide open on autofocus with movement, and it just nailed the autofocus um, using the touch screen. And, and I was using the A7R, no, the A7 A7 III. III. Yes. Here, this is at 1.2, and, and look at the oh, detail. 1.4, 1.4. Sorry, 1.4, yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the detail on the bling, and then I, I pulled focus with a touchscreen over to the, the, they obviously love their dogs like we do, of course. 
but um, I actually had to make myself pick up my 50 again because I was having so much fun. And I sent them an email like, hey, how about this just become mine? And <laughs> let me have this, but I, I think they had to have it for the show. But it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing piece of glass. So what we're always after uh, for video is just changing up the focal lengths. That's why we use so many different lenses for specific reasons is to keep your viewer interested in what they are looking at. Because if everything was 24 on that in that video, it's going to be boring. You know, so that's why we're always changing and switching up um, the lenses that we, well, Garrett is, I'm using, I'm always on the 7200, but we're always switching it up and we know how the other shoots. So we play to each other's strengths. Right. And the front, like I'll be on the wider side of things all day, like 50, 24, things like that. Right. And she'll be on the 7200 most of the day. So here's like, another, that's the, a ring shot with the 24. Sorry. <laughs> it was almost, it's almost a macro shot with this 24. That's not a macro, but it's just, it's so sharp. Yeah. Following the bride and groom on a gimbal at one four out to their car, wishing them farewell. It was great seeing you. I yeah. gotta get home. I'm tired. But All right, so fantastic. we have a full video up on Sony Alpha Universe's website. We go through every single camera and lens that's in our bag, why we use it. We go through audio recording devices. We talk about um, lights, uh, lights that we use. We talk gimbal, about drone, gimbal, drone, um, and support, support gear. So make sure you go to Sony Alpha Universe and um, check out our what's in our bag there. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone.